हेलो गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू एग्जाम गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन प्लीज कंफर्म मी दैट आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजुअल प्लीज कन्फर्म मी दैट आई एम ऑडिबल एंड वेजिबल टू In the last session, we started the chapter number two of the class six NCERT of geography subject, in which uh, we discussed the some points like uh, what is the axis, and uh, <coughs> what is the equator, what uh, and the uh, equator passes through which countries in the name of the countries, uh, from where equator is passing through, and all the things that is related to the basic concept of the latitude and the longitude. What is the latitude and the longitude? we will discuss in this chapter and this chapter is completely uh, uh, a basic chapter if you, if you understand the concept of the latitude and longitude then you can utilize this you can use this concept in entire geography okay so uh, application of the latitude and longitude is uh, uh, very important in the geography section so you should know about these thing so in the last session we have discussed the, what is the latitude and what is the axis and uh, if we remind you that the axis is the ima an imaginary line which passes or which join the north pole to south pole through the uh, through the center of the earth that is the axis what is the equator 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 is the baseline for the latitude and equator is uh, uh, an imaginary line which is drawn over the center over the center of the earth and it is drawn uh, horizontally and which divide the earth into two different parts the northern section is called the northern hemisphere and the southern section is called the southern hemisphere so uh, this is the uh, i think in the last session we have discussed these things okay and uh, further we are going to start we are further to continue the remaining discussion of this chapter and uh, uh, what is the equator you know about this uh, equator is the uh, latitude uh, equator is basically a horizontal line that is passes over the center of the earth horizontally and it divide the earth into two section that is the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere okay and uh, as you can look in the picture the equator can passes uh, equator is passing through the 13 nations of the world okay so please name these nations these nations are very important and uh, uh, in your examination uh, it could be asked it uh, it is a possible it might be asked in your examination Uh, in state pieces, especially in the state pieces, and in UPSC, it is also important for the UPSC. But UPSC cannot, uh, UPSC does not ask the question directly. UPSC can relate the things from other dimensions and then ask the question from this section. So uh, you should know about this, the uh, about this country from where equator is passing through. This is this is the uh, these are the thirteen nations. Okay, thirteen countries. So Colombia, Ecuador. Brazil, Sao Tome and Principe, Gabon, RPC and DRC, uh, Uganda, Somalia and Kenya, Maldives, Indonesia and Kiribati. These are the nations from where equator is passing through. Okay, so this is the name of the nation. So, what is the latitude and what is the longitude? In last section, in the last section uh, class, in the last session, we have. discussed that this is the equatorial line and if we take the angular distance from the center of the earth and this angular distance is called the latitude 
this angular distance is called the latitude okay this is the latitude so always remember that the latitude is the angular distance angular distance and that is why that is why we use the degree we use the degree unit for the measurement of the latitude if latitude is only the linear distance if the latitude is the linear distance then we always use the unit as a meter kilometer centimeter for the distance measurement but this is not the linear distance this is the angular distance and that is why we use the unit of the degree and degree is used in the measurement of the angle as you know in the mathematics degree is always used in the measurement of the angle not in the linear distance so this is the angular distance of latitude if we join the same latitude with an imaginary line if we join the same latitude with an imaginary line then this imaginary line that is the linear distance this is the linear line or you can say that this measure the linear distance this linear distance of this line is called the latitudinal line this line is called the latitudinal line so here is the latitudinal line and here uh, one is the latitudes so difference in the latitudinal line and different uh, difference in the latitude uh, i think is it clear in your mind okay so this is the latitude if we draw the latitude at every angle at the every degree of the angular distance if we draw the latitude at the every distance of the angular dis uh, every one degree or you can say the every angle of the uh, angular distance of the earth then we can draw the 90 latitude or we can take the 90 angular distance at the one side in one hemisphere so if we draw if we take the angular distance of each degree angular distance at each degree then there would be the 90 degree or the 90 angular distance we can take in one side in another side we also can take the 90 degree 90 angle angular distance so at the every angular distance we can draw a line except the 90 degree and the 90 degree because this 90 degree is, uh, is not able to draw a line because it is a point and on point we cannot draw a line because linear distance requires at least two point okay so there is a uh, 90 latitude in one side 90 latitude in another side and one latitude that is drawn on the over the over the uh, earth center and that is a zero degree which angular distance is zero degree that is also called the equator and this is one so if we calculate the total number of latitudes which we can uh, which are drawn on the earth surface or the latitudes the total number of the latitude on the earth is 181 how 190 in one side 90 in one side and one is zero so if we draw one degree if we take the one degree angular distance if we take two so if we take this this we can uh, reach at the 90 so there is a 90 there are the 90 latitude in one side 90 one side and one in mid and that is the 181 and so you should know about this this is the total number of latitudes this is the total number of latitudes so this is the total number of latitudes what are the total number of the latitudinal lines okay so uh, look here if we draw the line on the one degree angular distance when then we will get the one degree latitude so if we draw in such manner so till 89 to 89 89 degree latitude we will get the point we will get the line but at the 90 degree because 90 degree is a uh, a point 90 degree latitude is in the form of a point because of the shape of earth because of the shape of earth and it will if it is the point you cannot you are not able to draw the line on this 90 degree latitude so number of latitude when we calculate the number of latitude there is a 89 number uh, uh, there is a uh, 89 lines in one hemisphere 89 88 uh, 89 lines in one hemisphere 89 line in another hemisphere one line in the mid and that is the total number of the latitudinal lines is 179 so total number of the latitudinal lines are the 179 and total number of the to latitudes are 
181. So latitudinal lines are 179 and latitudes are 181. So you should know about this digit and you should know about this fact. This uh, fact is important for your uh, examination. Uh, for your, uh, it, it might be asked directly in your uh, state pieces examination, but it may be asked uh, in UPSC in the form of the statement not the number of the uh, in the uh, in the upsc if the question would be asked in upsc upsc will ask the total number of the latitudinal line is more than the total number of the latitudes is this statement is correct or wrong is this statement is correct or incorrect so this statement is absolutely incorrect because total number of the latitudes are uh, are more than the total number of latitudinal lines not the number of latitudinal lines are more than the latitudes Okay, so uh, in UPSC, it would be asked in the form of the statement. In the UPPCS or other PCS examination, it would be asked in the name of, in the form of the fact. So you should know about this fact. On the fact of this, you can uh, check the statement. Okay, so this is the latitude. Uh, the distance between the lat, if you if you look the latitudinal lines, due to the shape of the earth. The latitudinal lines never intersect to each other never intersect to each other then the latitudinal lines are always the like uh, always the parallel lines so these lines are always the parallel lines they never intersect to each other so they are the parallel line latitudinal lines are the parallel lines and the distance between two latitudes is always equal and that is the 1.1 1 .1, 111 point Three two kilometer. One hundred eleven kilometer. Not three two. One hundred eleven kilometer. The distance between two consecutive latitudinal lines is one hundred eleven kilometer. Okay. So distance between two consecutive latitudinal lines are one hundred eleven kilometer. So these are the important thing and the zone. Or you can say the area between the two latitudes are called the zone. The area between, the, suppose one latitude is here and another latitude is here. So area between two latitudes, the area between two latitudes are called the zone. This is called the zone. So area between two latitudes are called the zone. Distance between two latitudes are consecutive latitudes is 111 kilometer and it always remains same. And that is why the latitudinal lines is always parallel lines due to the shape of the earth. Because if you draw the parallel lines, it never intersect to each other. And you, if you observe this thing, every latitude, latitude is in the form of the circle. If every latitude is in the form of the circle, and then the largest circle, if you uh, uh, observe this, the largest circle is equator. The largest circle, or you can say this is the large or you can say the great circle if you observe that if earth is uh, like the spherical shape if every latitude uh, always in the form of the circular form in the circle and if we took uh, if we take this all the circle at the same time the maximum periphery has the uh, the maximum periphery uh, is consistent with the circle of equator or the circle which is located on the equator which consists the maximum periphery and that is why the largest circle or largest latitudinal circle is the uh, the equator so when we move from equator to poleward the circumference of the circle decreasing and then the last at the 90 degree latitude it become or it would convert into a point okay so it would convert into a point that is the uh, uh, you can see the periphery of the circle is decreasing Ajit Kumar, good morning. So this is the latitudes, latitudinal lines and latitudes. Suppose this is the zero degree latitude. Then what? You, uh, some important latitudinal lines are uh, considered on the Earth's surface. Some important latitudinal lines. If any latitudinal lines is considered as the important latitudinal line, uh, then it has some importance it has some reasons without reason no importance on the earth so if 
it has the important that means it has some reason for the important or the importance of this object so zero degree zero degree latitude is the more important uh, you can say it is the most important latitude line uh, latitude line because it provides the base for the all latitude line angular uh, latitude angular distance or the latitude so this is the equator why this is the equator because it equally divides the earth into two parts that is why it is uh, terms as the equator and uh, you can say uh, equator is also a great circle it is also a great circle it is also terms as the great circle so if you should know about this great circle in the latitudinal sense the another latitudinal line which is very important for us that is the uh, 23 and half degree north and south latitudinal line 23 and half degree north latitudinal line 23 and half degree south latitudinal line so what is the importance of the 23 and half degree north latitudinal line and why these latitudinal lines are uh, why these latitudinal lines are the important for us why we considering about these lines because our earth, earth is tilted by 23 and half degree on its axis okay our earth is tilted by 23 and half degree on its axis and due to this tiltness the sun rays falls perpendicularly up to 23 degree north latitude and up to 23 degree south latitude beyond the 23 degree north latitude and the 23 degree south latitude our sun rays never falls perpendicular perpendicularly so this is the outermost line outermost latitude which which experience the 90 degree 90 degree uh, falling of the sun rays or the vertically falling of the sun rays beyond this beyond this latitudinal lines no uh, no any space or the no any place uh, experience the vertical sun rays that is falling on that particular place with the 90 degree angle okay so this is the outermost point if you uh, if anybody asks to you why we consider the tropic of cancer as the 23 and half degree why we not take the 20, uh, for 24 degree or why we uh, we did not take the 23 degree 23 and half why because 23 and half is considered as a tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn due to the tiltness of the earth by the 23 of degree because earth is tilted 25 23 and half degree if earth would be tilted by the 40 degree then you are uh, 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 the variation of the 90 degree sun rays or the vertical variation of the sun rays uh, is from 90, uh, 40 degree to 40 degree. Okay, so sun rays is falling vertically uh, from, uh, from 23 and half to 23 half south, and this is the outermost point, outermost latitude, and that is why we are considering this latitude. And when the sun rays falls perpendicularly on the 23 and a half degree north, then in astronomy, sun rays was in the cancer condition uh, trop, uh, cap, uh, cancer condition and that is why this line is called the tropic of cancer so this latitude is called the tropic of cancer and when sun rays falls perpendicularly on the southern hemisphere at the 23 and half degree the when sun condition and in astronomy uh, in astrology not astronomy okay in astrology this is the in capricorn condition and that is why this is called the tropic of capricorn india has the uh, india has a you can say the huge impact on uh, ast astrology okay so astrology is basically uh, you can say uh, astrology was initiated in the india astrology was the initiated in the india and that is why the impact of uh, astrology uh, also seen in the different subject and on the astrology india has a tremendous in impact so this line is called the tropic of cancer this line is a tropic of capricorn uh, if you define this line this line is the outermost line uh, beyond which no uh, never sun rays never falls perpendicular and in the southern hemisphere this is the outermost line beyond this sun rays never falls perpendicular perpendicularly okay so this is the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn another latitude which is very important and we are considering this latitude the value of this latitude is the 66 and half degree north and 66 and half degree south 
then 66 and half degree north and 66 and half degree south. These are also the important latitudes. And these latitudes are the latitudes beyond which, beyond which sun rays never falls uh, with more angle, never falls uh, with the angle of more than 23 and half degree. So beyond this, sun rays never falls with the angle of the 23 and half degree. Okay. So the maximum angle, the maximum angle of the sun rays by which they are falling on this particular sur surface is less than 23 and half degree. They never falls uh, with the angle of more than 23 and half degree. So this line is passes from the Arctic, Arctic region and that is why this line is called the Arctic circle. So this line is called the Arctic circle. And this line uh, at the same in the southern hemisphere, beyond this uh, line, sun rays never falls perpendicularly. Uh, sun rays never falls uh, with the angle of more than 23 and a half degree. Okay, so and this is passes from the Antarctica region, and that is why this this is called the Antarctica circle. This is called the Antarctica circle. Okay. And then important latitude that is the 90 degree and this is also the 90 degree south. These latitudes are the polar part of the earth and that is why this is called the north pole which is located in the northern section of the earth and this is called the south pole. This is the north pole and the south pole. So these are the some important latitudes on the earth surface. These are the some important latitudes on the Earth's surface. Now, as I to, I I discussed that the area between two latitudes is considered as the zone. The area between two latitudes are considered as the zone. So, area between these two tropical zone. This is tropic. This is the tropic, and that is why this zone is called the tropics. Okay, this zone. Uh, this zone is called the tropical zone. This zone is called the tropical zone. Or somewhere it is also called the torrid zone. This zone, this zone on the earth surface uh, are the zone. Uh, this is the zone on the surface which gain the sun rays perpendicularly which experience the falling of the sun rays perpendicularly throughout the year. Okay, so sun rays falls perpendicularly between these two latitudinal lines or between these two tropics. That means this area or this zone experience the maximum vertical or you can uh, so you can say that this zone experience the uh, vertical sun falling or the sun rays falling throughout the year. If the sun rays falls vertically on any particular place, then the per unit energy, per unit area or the energy in per unit area will vary high. So this zone uh, gain the maximum energy from the solar radiation. This zone gain the maximum energy from the sun solar energy or the you can say the solar radiation. So the temperature of this zone is relatively high. Temperature of this zone is relatively high. Okay, so maximum temperature on the earth's surface is uh, find in on this zone is find on this zone and when we move when we move in this zone this zone uh, gain the solar energy or the so solar radiation or the solar uh, sun rays this zone gain the sun rays with the angle of with the angle which is lower than this zone but higher than this zone this zone get the angle solar uh, sun sun rays with lower angle of from this zone and the higher angle from this zone and that is why this zone gain the uh, moderate temperature this zone gain, uh, this zone gain the moderate energy or the solar energy and that is why the temperature of this zone is moderate and and due to the moderate temperature this zone is called the temperate zone this zone is called the temperate zone in this zone also and in this zone also this is the temperate zone.
temperate zone has the moderate temperature this zone has the moderate temperature and you should know about this this is high temperature this is the zone of the high temperature this is the zone of the moderate temperature and then now the solar radiation that is located uh, the zone that is located between this area or you can say the between these two latitudinal lines 90 degree and the 66 and half degree this zone gain the solar radiation or the sun rays with the maximum angle of the 23 and half degree that means in throughout the year sun rays is always less than the sun rays always falls with the less than uh, with the less than the 23 and half degree of the angle that is why this zone gains the minimum energy this gain zone the max minimum energy and that is why this area experience the less temperature and this zone is called the frigid zone this zone is basically a frozen zone and that is why this is considered as the frigid zone less temperature okay so this zone is considered as the less temperature so tropical zone temperate zone and the frigid zone there are three important uh, fundamental zone on the basis of the sun rays on the basis of the temperature falling of the sun rays and the basis of the temperature we can divide the earth in different zone and what is the zone zones are the uh, zones what is the zone zones are the area which is located between the two latitude which is located between the two latitude so you should know about this uh, this thing and this is the important thing that has mentioned in your ncrt of the class 6 chapter number 2 so we are discussing here the class 6 ncrt chapter number 2 Okay, I think is it clear? I think it is clear to you. If any doubt, you can ask the question. If anyone has any doubt, you can ask the question. And I think it is a basic thing. So there is no any, uh, this is no rocket science. So you can get it easily. So this is the latitude. Now, as per the discussion of the last session, as per the discussion of the last session, uh, you know about this that uh, there is a there are there is a requirement of the two axes. Okay, there is a requirement of the two axes for the finding of the location of location of any particular place. If you want to find out the if you want to uh, if you want to find out the uh, uh, location of any particular place you sh uh, have to know about you have to require two axes that is the x-axis and the y-axis so we draw the uh, x-axis as a latitudinal line but there is a requirement of a requirement of the y-axis as well so what is how we can divide how we can draw the y-axis on the our surface so for the y-axis determination there is a concept of the longitude for the x-axis determination there is a concept of the latitude and there is a y-axis determination there is a concept of the longitudes okay so longitude what is the longitude you should know about this what is the longitude so firstly it is the center of earth and there is an equatorial line there is a line that is passes over the center of earth and it was decided that it was decided that we consider a line vertically we consider a baseline vertically because in the case of the latitude only one line can pass, can pass over the latitude over the center but in the case of the longitude every line would be passed over the center of the earth so we should make a consensus about this which line should be considered as the central line which line should be considered as the central line then entire world all the all the geographers and the scientists was convened at the same place and they decided the central line as which is passes through the green which the central line they considered the central longitude or the chief longitude or the main longitude which is passes over the uh, center uh, which is passes over the green which in the london or the uh, 
Royal Observatory of the London. Royal Observatory of the London. And on the basis of this Royal Observatory of the London, they decided that the zero degree latitude, sorry, zero degree longitude is passing over the London, or you can say that is called the GMT also. So, firstly, they decided that a line which joins the North Pole to the South Pole over the center of the Earth. It passes the North Pole from the South, it joins the North Pole from the South Pole over the center of the Earth. Okay, over the center of the Earth. So, this is considered as the zero degree line longitude. This is considered as the zero degree longitude. And longitude is also known as the meridian. And that is why it is also called the prime meridian. That means the this is the prime meridian among all meridian that is located on the earth. So it was decided by the consensus. You should know about this. This was decided by the consensus that is zero degree longitude. And this line is also passes from the wind which and entire world decide their timeline on the basis of this line. And that is why this line is also terms as the Greenwich Mean Timeline. This is also considered as the Greenwich Mean Timeline, GMT line. Okay, so Greenwich Mean Timeline. GMT line and Greenwich Mean Timeline. So, on the basis of this zero degree longitude, we took the angular distance from the center of, to, of earth to the equator, to the equator. So, consider uh, uh, here. So, if it, the, it is the center of the earth, in the case of the latitude, we took the distance from here. If the center of the earth, we took the distance here and we join the line and latitude. But in the case of the longitude, we took the distance from the center to the equator, to the equator. So one distance here. So join this distance into opposite side. So we join this distance into in this form. One another distance is here. We join this distance into in this form. Another distance is here. We join this line into this in this manner. So in the case of the longitude, we took the angular distance from the center of the earth on the basis of the longitude and zero degree longitude to the surface of earth on the equator, on the equator, okay. So, uh, I think it is clear, longitudes are the same, you can understand here, if it is the center of earth, in the case of the latitude, we took the distance this and join this distance. But in the case of the longitude, we took the distance from the 0 to equator, 1, 0 degree, at the 0 to 0, no angle, 0 degree, 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 4 degree, 5 degree, then we consider the longitude at the uh, all around from a center, from the point of the center. So, if we took a distance on this point and we match this line, we join this line from this section. So, we will get the lo longitudes, we will get the vertical lines that joins the longitudes. We will get the vertical line that joins the north pole to south pole. And these lines are called the longitudes. These are uh, the angular distance are called the longitudes. And these lines which join this angular distance is called the longitudinal line. So same concept at the latitude. Here is the longitude and the longitudinal lines. You can apply this all concept. So this is the longitudes. If you draw, if you want to make the, uh, if you want to uh, make a angular distance from a center, then you will get that from a center, we can uh, take, we can take the 360 degree, we can take the 360 degree angle. So at the, in the case of the longitude, you can take the 360 angle. In the case of the latitude, you can take only the 90 degree angle in one side. So it is uh, the 360 degree angle. It, you can take the 360 angle, uh, 360 angle from a center of the earth. And zero degree longitude, zero degree longitude divides the earth into the two different hemisphere vertically. And the hemisphere which is located in this side is considered as the eastern hemisphere. 
and the hemisphere which is located in the east side, this side, this is called western hemisphere. So, a zero degree latitude divides the earth into the northern and southern hemisphere, but zero degree longitude divides into eastern and the western hemisphere. So, all the latitude which is measured into, into the eastern hemisphere is denoted with the east and the, all the light longitude which is measured uh, which is measured into the western hemisphere is always denoted with the west okay so longitudes are measured with the east and west and latitude are measured with the north and the south okay so uh, this is the longitude but look here if you observe that the distance between the longitudes does not remain the same in the case of the latitude the distance is always remain the same but in the case of the longitude, this is the distance is not remain same. Distance is in varying condition. When you move from the extent, uh, from the equator toward the pole, the distance between the two consecutive longitudes are decreasing. Okay, so it is uh, the distance between the two longitudes are not the same. That is why they are not parallel lines. And the distance between the two longitudes is in varying condition. And the maximum distance between two longitudes is on surface uh, on the equator. And the minimum distance is on the pole. So you should know about this. The longitudinal lines are not a parallel lines, and uh, the distance is varying. The maximum distance between the two longitudes are on equator. It always on the equator, and the distance between the two longitudes is 111.32 kilometer. And the minimum distance is always on the poles, and that is the zero. That is the zero. Okay, that is the zero. So longitudes are the important line, uh, uh, important lines, or which uh, longitudinal lines are the important lines which provide the y-axis for the determination of the any uh, determination of the location of any particular place. So minimum and the maximum distance you should know about this. Eastern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere. Zero degree longitudes is also known as the prime meridian. Uh, it is also known as the Greenwich Mean Time Line. And uh, uh, there is a total number of the longitude. So what is the total number of the longitudinal lines? What is the total number of the longitudes? So the number of the longitudes are the 360. The number of the longitudes are the 360. And the number of the longitudinal lines are also the 360. Okay. So number of the longitudinal lines are the 360. Okay. So this is the... 16. And the zero degree, if you consider this is the zero degree, just in the back side of the zero degree, there is a 180 degree. There is a 180 degree. So zero degree is backed, or the, the 180 degree is located just back to the zero degree longitude. So 180 degree is just back to the uh, zero, uh, zero degree. And Zero, 180 degree longitude is also the east longitude, it is also the west longitude. 180 degree east and 180 degree west are the same longitude, same longitude. If you move from the 0 degree to 180 degree from this side, then you will reach at the just opposite of the 0 degree. When you move from this side, you also move, uh, you also reach at the just opposite to the 0 degree. So, uh, 180 degree of the the western hemisphere or the eastern hemisphere is same, just opposite to the zero degree, and one is 180 degree from opposite hemisphere is also the same uh, at the opposite of the or the just back of the zero degree such zero degree longitude. So zero degree longitude, uh, uh, the uh, the back side or the you can say the 180 degree eastern and hemisphere uh, eastern and the western longitude are lies at the just back of the zero degree or opposite of the zero degree. So 180 degree east and 180 degree west longitudinal lines are the same line. And on the basis of this line, on the basis of this line, we decided the international date line. We decided the international date line. On the basis of this international date line, entire world decided their dates. Entire world decides their dates okay so international date lines are this uh, on the basis of the 180 degree so remember this 
180 degree is not the international date line. We decided the 180 uh, international date line on the basis of the 180 degree. So, please uh, focus on uh, focus on this statement. 180 degree eastern longitude or the western longitude is exactly not an international date line. On the basis of the 180 degree eastern and the western longitude, we decided the international date line because international date line does not exactly lies on the 180 degree because uh, and uh, uh, international date line has curved three times when any landmass uh, falls in the path of the 180 degree. Okay. So, international date lines is the date line which is curved the three times. Okay, this is the international date line. Why this curve has happened? Why this curve was done? Because if any, uh, if the international date line passes through the landmass, then it divides the landmass, same landmass, and the date of the same land, landmass will be different, will be different. So, if the landmass, uh, if the date will be, a uh, date will, date of the same landmass will be different, then it will be, it will be create the problems. So, for avoidance, for the uh, avoidance of the different dates of the same landmass, this uh, international date lines had uh, zigzagged. This international date line zigzagged three times. Okay. And you should know when you move from the one section to, if this is the one international date line. Okay. Then if you move from this section to this section, if you move eastward, then you will get a day extra, gain a day. And if you move this side, then you will lose a day. Gaining and losing. How? Because this eastern section uh, experienced the sun rays firstly. Suppose today is the day of the 7th of September. Suppose this is the 7th of September or the 6th of today is the 7th of September. Suppose a person which is resigning here, which uh, uh, experienced the 7th of September. Okay. If you move from this section, then you will gain. If you move from this section, then you will lose. If any person which is residing in the in this section and uh, at the seventh of September, okay. And when this person move into this section. And uh, at the same time, this section experienced the 6th of September because when you move from this section to this section, the date is back. Okay. So, if you are living in the 7th September, you will do all the things on the 7th September and you, if you move in this section, you will get again the 7th of September. You will get again the 7th of September. So, gain of the one day. If any person is living in this section, 5th of the September, and if the person moves into this direction, this uh, this zone experience the sixth of sixth of the September. So the person will lose the one day when it moves from the uh, west to east. So from west to east, when you move from west to east, you will lose one day. And if you move from the east to west, then you will get the one day extra. So gaining from this section, you can know. You can. Uh, Understand here, if you move from east to west, then you will gain, you will gain one day. If you move from west to east, then you will lose, you will lose one day. So, this is all about your class uh, six, second chapter of the geography NCRT. And I think uh, you should read the NCRT with me and uh, make the uh, things clear. We will meet into the next session and uh, please subscribe the channel. If you're not, if you're not subscribed this channel till now, then you can please subscribe this channel. 
share this video like this video if you have any doubt you can uh, put up uh, put your doubt in the comment box okay we will consider the, your doubts and we will reply your doubt in the next session so uh, please share and like this channel and please download the example official application so we'll meet into the next class thank you so much